to end this pod episode with some happiness, our toast is about the cutest darn show on Netflix right now, potentially the cutest show that Netflix has ever done and the best teen drama of the year, I'm calling it now. Uh, that's Heartstopper. Absolutely. Yes. yes. The love story between Charlie Spring and Nick Nelson has stolen all three of our hearts, stolen, I believe, fanside entertainment's hearts <laughs> at this point, and, um, and the internet. I mean, if you've seen uh, these boys online, they're actors or moments from the scene, they're getting retweeted a lot, and they're getting retweeted a lot because this is such a cute, cute, cute teen romance drama on Netflix. To quote Lady Gaga, talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, all the words. Like, it's just, it's so, it's exactly what we need. I think it showed all the other girls, aka the networks, what they should have done, what they should be doing. It's just so delightful and pleasant. And even in the harder moments in the show, there's levity in, in it. And there's, the characters find their strength through all the bullying and mess. Um, but I think that more than anything, it showed that there's room for queer joy. There's room for queer love. There's room for teen joy, which you don't see in teen dramas or teen anything anymore. It's mostly trauma-based. And there is trauma in the show, but I'm saying overall, it is very joyful. And I think it proved that there's a demand for this kind of story on television, no matter where it is. Yeah, it's like, it's so uplifting. And I think that's the important thing to take away from here. It's so many genres. I can hide behind the fact that it's technically a comic book show as well. So <laughs> I'll say it's the best comic book show of the year. And you know how much I love Superman at Lois. But it's the best, everything it's tried to do, it's done so well so that I could easily see someone saying it's the best this, it's the best that. And, but there's such a like simple charm to it. And that was, I watched it on Friday morning and it set me up so well for the day, the weekend, the week that followed. I'm still thinking about it. It's such a wonderful, joyous show. And it's weird. I just, with the British talent, I would have followed. I knew so many people were going to be involved in the show to begin with. So I've been sitting watching it come to fruition. And it always struck me kind of like as a little show that could be kind of thing. I never expected it to take off so quickly, so loudly and so passionately at such at the level that it has. And it warms my heart that it has. It's like dominated the world in like less than a week. And it's just so wonderful to say it's important for representation. It's important for just uplifting dramas. It's important for, for authentic representation of queer love. It's just, it ticks it tick so many boxes in the right kind of way. And that it's just so powerful. And to me, that's what television as a medium can do. So all the love that's that's how you do television for me and i think was it reed that you said why would any tv show bother after making yeah. a show like this because the 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 standard the the yardstick the the tent pole has been set how can anyone reach that it's just so wonderful and if you're in in search for a tv show to watch this week that week the other week i know we should be recommending a cw show to you but right now i'm perfectly happy to go off book because this show needs to be seen as by as many people as possible. It's adorable, but more than that, it's important. So please watch it. Yes, yes. and also CW should take notes. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. this, like not even just for that aspect of representation when it, um, it, on so many, like multiple levels, yeah. um, whether we're talking about queer love or queer youth, but youth in general, because I mean, mm -hmm. teen stuff has been okay on, um, on uh, the CW um, in terms of allowing them to be teens. I mean, yes, it's the home of teen dramas, but let's be real. <laughs> um, they don't really act like teenagers a lot of the time on their shows. They've gotten better over the years, but when you're talking about like teen television that feels like it's for teens, but it does also have a crossover appeal, it's Heartstopper. Um, it's also filled with so many different tropes um that like you like so many different romantic tropes you have the kiss in the rain you have you have the standing up on um toes as they kiss uh there's a whole cinderella story moment uh where like because uh nick is a jock 
and um, and uh, Charlie is more like a, a musician kind of boy. And so when you have like the jock running off the field to go see his boy, you're like, yes, I know what this this trope is. <laughs> like I'm so good, glad he gets to have this like magical moment in front of like everybody in the school, especially because a lot of them are turds, um, and we're awful to him. Um, but it's it's such a powerful show. Um, not even just because of its representation, just because of its ability to make you happy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's really important in television, not even just for teen shows, but in general, a lot of the time we're going through, through it with these characters. And it's not like there aren't issues um, that Charlie has to go through, especially and Nick, they do. They deal with bullying and homophobia. And um, it's hard figuring yourself out as, as a kid, let alone when, when, um, you come you're like having a weight an awakening about what your orientation is and, and what does that mean and how do you how do you navigate that in a space where your friends aren't really the greatest but you find other friends that are really great and understand what you're going through um and i just loved seeing that happen with a romance at the center i think that's just really really important so netflix please i mean this is a cw pod so anybody off the netflix probably isn't listening <laughs> but please Give us a season two of Heartstopper. There is more story to be told for Nick and Charlie. There's more story to be told for Tara and Darcy. And of course, there's more story for Ellen Tao because they're like the, the lone couple out when it comes to like realizing a romance is necessary. I hope that Netflix sees the potential. Like the show's not going to have Bridgerton numbers and that's fine, but we've seen the impact that it's made. It's a cult favorite show that has the potential of being a mainstream hit. And I don't, I just worry, I think we're all worried about Netflix these days because they are so um, unpredictably predictable or predictably unpredictable. I don't know, mm -hmm. however you'd say. And I don't want them to get bogged down by the fact that it's not in the top 10 anymore. But we've seen both of the lead actors hit 1 million followers on Instagram. There's endless tweets every day. People adore this show. And I hope they realize what they have because they have something really, really special. Yeah, so. Sam, I hope so too, because uh, you, you do see the impact it's made in such a short amount of time. Uh, like both the actors are on the a British talk show this morning and like the hosts who I would have watched interviewing anybody over the years, literally describing how it went from nothing, it didn't exist a week ago to total world domination within less than a week. Let's be honest, but by the time the weekend started, it was dominating the world. People were talking about it all over. You see the reaction the tweets get online. You see the reaction to it in all the reviews. One of the few 100% Rotten Tomatoes reviewed shows like that is that's just unprecedented. So yes, the popularity is important, but the story, the timeliness, the importance is even more important. So yeah, I hope we go down a similar route of young royals here and that maybe this show won't be the next Stranger Things, but it's a heck of a lot closer to, to becoming that than a lot of people expected it to be. So I hope that everything works in its favor and that Netflix gives it a second season because like, what's the point if you're not going to tell the stories that people need to say? And this, in my opinion, is one of them. 